We're going to be taking a look at the use deferred value hook, which is new in the experimental React release. Now, the whole purpose of this hook is to help you out when you have something that loads slow. And instead of wanting to show a loading indicator, if you wanted to show a past value, you could. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example. Right here, I have two values, a number that I'm displaying and a person. So my number and my person are both async calls and they load at different times. So my number is slow, my person loads in, loads in quickly. And right now I'm using the use transition hook. When I push refresh data, you can see my person shows up right away and then it loads my number in for a second and then it displays it here. All right, and we can watch this again uh, as this happens. Now, let's say I don't wanna show that loading indicator. Instead, what I wanna happen is I show this the stale, you could say the stale value, or you could say the previous value. So this number right here, when I push refresh data, I'd like that to show here. So that is what the use deferred value hook can let us do. So let's see this in action. So I'm gonna say use deferred value. And so this is something we can import from React. And I'm gonna say deferred resource. This is just gonna be the name of my variable. And then I'm gonna say use deferred value. So here we pass in the value that we'd like to show the last version of. So in this case, it's gonna be our resource. And our resource, if you remember, let's click on this, let's go over here. By the way, I'm command click or control click will take me to the definition of my function. Uh, so my resource here is just uh, promises that have been wrapped so they fit the suspense API. So I basically want to show a stale version of this. And then here I can specify a timeout. So for example, I could set a timeout of five seconds. So here I can either show the stale value for up to five seconds and then show a loading indicator, or if the data loads in, then we're going to show the uh, most recent data. So let's see this. So our number is the thing that is loading slowly. So that is where I'm going to pass in the deferred resource and I'll give that a save. And now we can see this in action um, in our actually website. So let's push refresh data. And so you can see that the number here um, didn't show any kind of loading indicator. We saw the last value, right? This value here is now stale and then it displays the new value, right? And I can press this um, and we can see it come in like that. Now, one thing uh, that you can do is you can actually check whether something is um, stale. So we can say is stale is equal to, and we can just check if the deferred resource is equal to our current resource. So deferred resource is equal to the current resource. And so it, we can do styling changes if we want to. So here I'm going to say the color should be pink if it's stale. Otherwise, keep it black. All right, so we'll see this now. So now when I push, well, this, this should not be stale. I meant to say not equals. So if the deferred resource does not equal the current resource, there we go. So if I press this, we can see this is stale, it's pink, and then when it loads in, it becomes black, right? I can press this. Now, some interesting functionality that I've seen with this. Actually, before I go into that, I wanna just mention also that we can play with the timeout and make it shorter. So like, for example, if I make my timeout one second, we can see it shows the uh, stale value for only one second, then it timed out and went to a loading indicator. So see that again, timed out, loading indicator, and then the fresh data comes in. So you have some uh, settings you can play with with the timeout here, depending on how long you wanna actually show stale data for. So I'm gonna keep mine at five seconds here. All right, so. The interesting functionality that I found was, let's say we press this a couple times. Now, because I'm using the tra use transition hook, um, it only lets me press it twice um, before it disables the button for me. Um, but you'll notice it basically flashes two values back to back. And you can see this more obviously if we push our button here, make it a regular button so it doesn't use the use transition hook. Um, and actually, let me pick a color besides pink so it's more readable. So uh, let's pick an off shade of black like 444. 
All right, so if I press this a couple times, right, you're gonna notice the numbers just kind of flow in. So if I press the button 10 times, um, it's gonna defer those 10 values and then it doesn't work like the bouncing where it's only gonna take the last value and render that. It actually kind of like cycles through all the old values, which I found a little bit odd, all right? So I click all these and then it just here it now cycles through them to catch up to the most recent value, uh, which is kind of odd. Um, I thought it would work kind of similar to use to bounce or some kind of debouncing where it just grabs the last value, but it kind of cycles like that. Uh, so that's that is just one thing to note about this that I found a little interesting. Now the other thing that we can do with this use deferred value hook is it doesn't have to be with suspense. It can be with anything apparently that is slow. So to try this out, what I wanted to do um, is one operation that can be very slow is doing prime numbers, especially if you don't know how to use the prime sieve. Um, or you don't know how to do um, optimizations. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna create a component here called um, bigprime.js. Uh, and what this component's gonna do is I'm gonna pass in a number to it. So big prime, which I'm gonna call n. And then I would like to display the biggest number that is, or biggest prime that is less than n. So here I'm gonna say let biggest prime be equal to two by default. And so my purpose with this function or this component is uh, if we do really big ends, it should be pretty slow and we can use use deferred value and see what happens with it. So here I'm going to just iterate from two. By the way, we start from two because that's the smallest prime number. And we're gonna go up to n and we're gonna say i plus plus. Now here is our naive way of detecting whether it's prime. We're just gonna loop from two and we're gonna go from while k is less than i and then we're gonna say k plus plus. All right, so uh, say the number is five here. Uh, we're gonna be iter iterating. Uh, we're gonna be checking if the number two is prime, then we're gonna check if the number three is prime. So this for loop here, check if number is prime. All right, so we're gonna say is prime is equal to true by default. And if we can find something where i is divisible by k, then we know it is not prime. And then here we can just say is prime, then we can say biggest prime is equal to i. All right, so we have a nice nested for loop here. And in my render function here, I'm gonna say biggest prime less than n is biggest prime. All right, so now I'm just gonna render my component all the way down here. Biggest, I just call it big prime. And let's say we put the number 100 in here. Um, we can see the biggest prime less than 100 is 97. Cool, so now what I wanna do is I wanna hook this up to an input. So I'm gonna say n set n, and I'm gonna put this in state. So the, say 10 is the first value we'll use. And then I'm gonna put an input here, and I'm gonna say the value is equal to whatever the value of 10 is. And it needs to be a string, so I'll cast it to a string like that. And then on change, I'm just gonna say set n is equal to, and here I'm going to parse int e.target.value. Uh, so here I'm just assuming that the user, which is me, is gonna pass in a number for the input field, and then we're gonna update what the value of n is. And that's what we're gonna pass to our big prime. All right, so we can see it's 10 here, and now like if I add a zero here, it's gonna show here. Now. Here's the fun thing that's gonna happen here is when I get to a big enough number, which I think it's gonna happen on my next one, once I press zero, it's gonna start lagging. Um, I'm actually a little afraid to go up higher than this to crash my computer. But uh, right around here is where you basically the input here is gonna freeze. So I'm gonna just go one more than this. We'll see if this totally freezes. Um, so right now it's totally frozen. I can't click on this, right? 
Um, so I'd want to avoid my input from freezing like this. I really only want this component here to be thinking, if you will. And so I was like, all right, let's stick that in a use deferred value and see what that does for us. So here I'm going to say deferred n is equal to use deferred value. I can pass in my n here. And I can say a timeout of, I don't know, five seconds seems fine with me. Now let's do 10 seconds. And I'm going to just pass in my deferred n now to my big prime n. And we'll give that a save. Um, and by the way, I don't think this is actually coming back. I think he's just dead, so I'm just going to open up a new tab. Uh, so also careful if you're doing this. You can definitely crash your browser. And actually what I'll do is I'm just going to say let max iterations is equal to 1 million. Yeah. I'm just making sure this was a mil. There we are. And so what I'll do is if max iterations is less than zero, we'll just break out of our loop. And so I'll say max iterations minus equal one. So we'll cap this so we can't go too far. Uh, basically, we're just going to just spam some zeros in here. Um, and now my input is really nice and free. Oh, you know what? I broke it because I did a NAN. Oh, there we go. My input's kind of behaving kind of odd. I was kind of just mashing a bunch of numbers. Okay, let's do two, and it kind of like reset. I guess the max iterations is always going to get the, give me the same prime here. Let's do like five million to make it interesting. I want to come close so it's we get a little bit of lag, but I don't want to get too much lag where it throttles my computer. All right, so now I'm going to do this a couple times. Yeah, it doesn't really lag much. It kind of just instant computes. If I open up my inspector, I wonder if I can go to network. I think there's a way for me to throttle my CPU, but I forget how to do it. Probably performance. There we go. CPU throttling. 6x slowdown. All right, so let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there we go. Now I can get some nice lag. This can actually get the effect that I kind of wanted to see if it would happen. So basically what's happening is I can kind of freely type in my input field here. Um, and the value here is going to catch up kind of in the side. Um, but really it kind of starts to lag here anyway. Like, look, it's kind of froze my browser. We can see how the deferred values kind of queue up still though here. This is me mashing backspace a little bit. Uh, basically the moral of the story is if you're doing something that is computationally heavy, you're going to need to stick it on the server or on a web worker or something. We can't just pr calculate primes on the main thread. Um, it still lags it even with the de use deferred value. It helps a little bit but not enough. Uh, but anyway, this hook's kind of weird, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to end up using it. Uh, I think using it in conjunction with use transition is going to make the most sense because use transition stops me from, like, mashing it a bunch of times and then it just, like, queuing up a bunch of renders and then they just, like, play afterwards. It's kind of a weird effect. I'm not sure anyone's going to want to show it to a user. Uh, but there you go. That is me playing around with uh, use deferred value.